So then, I'd like to now talk about how we can use props inside the setup function and with the composition API. Now to do that, we're gonna need another component so that we can nest that component inside the home one and then pass a prop into it. So what I've done is strip back all of the code we've been playing with for the last couple of lessons and I've replaced it with this right here. We have the setup function and inside we have a ref called posts and that is an array of two objects. Each object is a single post, has a title, a body and an ID. So we have this and we're returning it right here. And this is what we're gonna pass in as a prop to another component. Now the first step is to create that other component and that will be called post list dot view inside the components folder. So now we need to flesh this out a little bit. So first of all, we'll say view to create this boilerplate. And then I'm going to say div dot post list like so. And inside here is where I want to cycle through some posts. Now we need to pass those posts in as a prop and we need to nest the post list component right here. So let's do that. I'm going to say post list first of all. And then down here, we need to import the post list. So let's do that. I'm going to say import post list. And that is from, and then it's dot dot forward slash to come out of the views into components. And then we want the post list dot view. Now we need to register that as well. So components and it's just the post list like so. And then a comma. Okay, so now we can pass this posts value into the post list as a prop. So we'll data bind, we'll call the prop posts and set it equal to posts. That's all we need to do. We're just passing it in as a prop, same as normal. Okay then, so inside the post list, we can now accept it, but how do we accept it? Well, we still need to say props down here inside the component object, and that will be an array and we want the posts. So that's the first step. Now we can use the posts just as normal now inside the template. So nothing's really changed at the minute. The only thing changing is how we're creating the posts and returning them so we can use them over here. So now I have them, I can do something with them. So what I'm gonna do is cycle through them. So I'll say div, and then we're gonna have a V hyphen four and set that equal to post in posts. Now we also need a key on this for each item. So data bind to a key and then set it equal to post.id. Remember we have the ID property on each post. So then inside here, we could do an H3 and output the post title. So we'll say post.title like so. All right, so if I do this, then come over here, then we can see those post titles. So this is working as it should do. Now, what if I want to use this inside the setup function? Well, I would have to say setup, and then we can take in as a first argument to this props, and then we could access them inside the setup function. So I could say console.log props like so. I'm gonna save this, and then I'm gonna refresh, and we can see now this is a proxy object. And inside that we have, if we open these objects, the post property. Now, if we want to access them directly, we can say props.posts like so, save that. And now we can see if we scroll down, we get this object, which is just the posts right here. Don't worry too much about what this proxy means. This is just like a wrapper wrapping around the object. But if we want to work with them inside the setup, we can just say props.posts. Now then, I'd also like to create a further component and that will be called single post. So let me do this. I'm gonna say single post dot view and inside this, I'll boilerplate our components and this is gonna be for a single post. So what we'll do is instead of the H3 here, we'll nest a single post and we'll pass in as a prop the post. So I'm gonna say post is equal to post like so. And that's all we need to do. Oops, let me just format this correctly. Like so, that's all we need to do now. We have access to the post because we're cycling through the posts right here and we're passing it in now as a prop to single post. Now, in order to use this, we need to import it. So let's do that, import single post from, 
and it's dot forward slash because we're in the same folder single post dot view and then down here we'll say components and it's just the single post like so okay so now we can accept a prop inside this component and I'll do that here I'll say props and then post now we can do something with this so what I'll do is come to the template and create a div with a class of post and inside that I'm going to output the post title so I'll do an h3 for that and say post dot title so this should still work if I come over here and refresh we can see the titles are still there now this time around I also want to output a post snippet so imagine we had a lot of content for the body right here I don't want to output the whole body I just want to output a snippet of the body maybe the first 100 characters or something like that so the first thing I'm going to do is replace all of this with a load of lorem ipsum and save it now if I was just to output the post body let me do this p and then post dot body like so then it's going to output the whole body like this. I might just want to output like this much or even just this much or something like that as a snippet for the home page. And then when we see the blog details later, then we'd show it all. So how do we create this snippet? Well, I'm going to come inside the setup function and I'm going to accept the props. And in those props, we have the post. So I'm going to say const snippet is now equal to a computed property press enter make sure it imports that right here and inside this computed we're going to fire a function and it's going to return a snippet based on the post that we have on the props so return and then props dot post and then dot body and that's the property that we want to kind of make a snippet from remember if we take a look over here this property is the body and to make a snippet, we're going to use a string method called substring. Now, this takes in two arguments. Where do we want to start and where do we want to end? So we start at the zero position, the start of the string, and we'll go up to 100 characters. And this returns to us the first 100 characters of the string. We're going to tack on to that as well three dots at the end or four dots, just so we know there's more to this. So now if we use this snippet in our template, it's going to get us the first 100 characters and these few dots at the end as well. But first of all, we need to return it so we can use it in the template. Return the snippet like so, and then we can output the snippet right here. So save that and preview. And now we just see a snippet right here, which is better. So hopefully you can see how we can use props. A lot of it is the same way. We just pass in props as normal like this, but if we want to use them inside the setup, we have to take them in as the first argument, and then we can use the different properties on the props. Earlier on in the course, we saw that we could use lifecycle hooks inside component objects. Something like this. We could say mounted to run some code when the component mounted or updated to run some code when the component updated. For example, if our data changed and it had to reflect that change in the template. Now we can still do that when we're using the setup function as well. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but we can also use lifecycle hooks inside the setup function. Now, the way we do this is just by importing whatever hooks we want from view. And there is a slight change in the name of the hooks as well. The only change is it's on before each of the hooks. So instead of mounted, it would be on mounted. Instead of updated, it would be on updated. So I'm inside the post list and I'm going to get rid of this console log right here. We don't need that anymore. And I'm going to use the on mounted hook. Click on this and it should import it for you from view. So all we do is pass a function into this and this will fire some code when the component is mounted. Now, all I want to do is log something to the console. So console.log and I will say component mounted. Now we can do other hooks as well. So we could say on unmounted, for example, and it should import that up here. And we do the same thing, pass in a function which will run when this component unmounts. So again, I'll just say console.log and I will say component unmounted. 
And finally, I'll do one more. I'll say on updated, press enter. It imports that hook for us. And again, we pass in a function. This time I'll say console.log component updated. So this will happen whenever any kind of data change happens, which will force a re-render. So in our case, maybe if the posts change that we pass into this component, because if they change, then this stuff right here is going to change. We'll be passing different posts in. So what I'm going to do now is just save this and open up the console over here. And I'm going to just get rid of that. I'm going to refresh and we can see component mounted. Now we don't see the others because there's no updates and we're not unmounting the component. So what I'm going to do is go to the home component and I'm going to implement a little bit of functionality whereby we can hide and show the posts, in which case this component is going to unmount if we hide it, and also where we can change the posts, in which case we're going to run the on updated hook. So the first thing I'll do is create a button right here and inside that I'll say toggle posts. So I want to be able to hide and show this based on a user click in this. So I'm going to create a property inside setup and this will be a reactive property. So const show posts is equal to ref and we want this to be true to begin with. So they do show and we also need to return it down here like so. And what I'll do is only show this if this is true. So I'll say over here, the if is equal to show posts. So if this is true, then this will show. The minute it turns false, then this component is going to unmount. It won't show anymore. And at that point, it will run this function. So let's toggle that using this button. I'm going to say at click is equal to, and we'll say show posts is equal to the reverse of whatever show posts currently is. So if it's currently true, it will turn it to false and vice versa. So let's save that and give this a whirl. And I'm going to get rid of all this right here. So if I refresh, we can see component mounted. If I click on this, it should hide this and we can see component unmounted. Toggle again, component mounted. Toggle again, component unmounted. All right, so we can see that that lifecycle hook right here is working and it's firing whenever the component unmounts. So let's now try and fire this one by changing the post data. To do this, I'm going to create another button and inside the button I'll say delete a post. And all we'll do now is attach a click event to this whereby we take the posts and we use the pop method on it. And that just basically removes one from the posts array. We have access to this because we have the posts returned to us and we can change it directly in the template by using this pop method. So that takes one off the posts. Therefore, the data right here changes going into this. And since this data changes, we'll be outputting a different number of single posts. Therefore, this template is changing. And when that happens, when we're updating a component, this will fire. So let me save this and come over here and I'm going to delete a post and we can see we get rid of one of those and it says component updated and the rest still works unmounted and mounted. So there we go. That's how we use these different lifecycle hooks inside the setup method using the hooks and they're all called on whatever the hook was called beforehand. And again, we don't have to place them here. If you want to, you can place them down here. So I could say mounted and then run some code in here. So I'll say console.log and we'll say mounted using options API like so. If I come over here and we can see mounted using options API. So that runs as well. So you don't have to use them up here, but I generally will when we're using lifecycle hooks from now on. All right then, so in this chapter, we're gonna move on to performing asynchronous code inside the setup function down here. So we have used asynchronous code before when we fetch data from the db.json file using JSON server. We're gonna do a similar thing now, but this time it's all gonna be from within the setup function. 
Now, in this chapter, we're going to be using async and await, which is a way in JavaScript that we can handle asynchronous code and promises. So if you don't know what that is, I would highly recommend that you first of all, check out one of the last videos in the last chapter of this course, where I talk about the basics of async and await. Get up to speed with that first of all, and then come back so that this is not confusing, okay? If you know about async and await, then feel free just to carry on. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new data folder over here because we're going to create a db.json file again, db.json, and we'll store all of our data in here. Again, later on, we will be using a database, but for now, I just want to store it in db.json and I'm going to paste this data in from my repo and it's just one resource. We have posts, that's an array and there's two objects inside it. So two posts, each one has an ID, it has a title, it has a body and also some tags, which is an array of different strings, different tags. Okay. So each one of these represents a blog. That's the data that we're going to be working with. The next thing I want to do is install the JSON server package. So let's open this up and install it for this project. We'll say npm install JSON hyphen server and press enter. And now that's installed, I'm going to use JSON server to watch our DB file. So go into the data folder and then we want the db.json file press enter and now we have access to this endpoint for the posts cool okay so next what i'd like to do is delete all of the data that we create inside the setup function because now we're going to try and get the data from the db file instead so i'm going to delete these two objects inside the array but i'm going to keep the array as the initial value for posts we're going to keep this ref to store our posts in once we've fetched them so to begin with it's an empty array after we fetch them, we populate that array. Now, I also want to make another ref, and that is going to be called error, just in case there's an error with the request. Now, it's going to be null to begin with, but if there is an error later on, we'll populate this value as well. All right, so now let's try and fetch the data. Now, like I said, we're going to be using async and await to do this. So first of all, I'm going to create an async function, and I'm going to call that load. So we set it equal to an async function, like so. And that means that now, because we've denoted this as async, we can use the await keyword inside this. Now, I want to place my logic inside a try catch block like this. And the way a try catch block works is that we try to do something. In our case, we're going to try to fetch the data. And if it works, great. It doesn't use this catch block. If it doesn't work and there's an error, this catch block will catch the error and we can do something with it. That's how try catch works. And this is generally the approach that we're going to take when we're working with async and await. So then let's now get the data. I'm going to create a variable called data and set it equal to await, and we want to use the fetch API to do this. So what this does is perform the fetch, and instead of going on to the next line of code down here, it will wait until that fetch is complete right here because we've said await it. Once it's complete, the response will be stored inside this data variable, all right? So we need to put an endpoint into this, and remember that endpoint is right here. So we want to get all the posts. So I'm going to copy that and paste it inside a string in there. So we're awaiting this. And now we can do something with the data once we have it. All I'm going to do for now is log out the data. So console.log the data like so. Save that. And I'm going to come over here. We don't see the posts anymore because we deleted the local data. I'm going to open up the console and I'm going to refresh. In fact, this won't work because we're not calling the load function anywhere. So now let's call it down here so that it runs this code. Okay, save that and now come over here and we can see we have this response object. Now, you see this thing right here? This okay means the response was okay and we have data back. So I want to check that it is okay before I try to do something with the data. Now, remember, when we use the fetch API, we have to use the JSON method to pass that data. But first, 
I will make sure that the response is okay. And if it's not, then we're gonna throw an error whereby we can catch the error right here. If it is okay, then we'll pass the JSON and we'll use that data. Okay, so let me delete this and do the if check. I'm gonna say if data dot okay and then open this up. Now this is if the data is okay, but I only want to run this bit of code that I'm gonna create here if the data is not okay. So all I need to do is place an exclamation mark right here. So now if it is okay, then this whole statement will be false and it won't run this. If it's not okay, the whole statement will be true and it will run this. And that's the scenario that I do want to run it when the data is not okay, because now I can throw an error. So I will throw the error and I'll say no data available. You might create better errors in your applications and we'll probably do that later in our other projects, but for now this will do. So when we throw an error right here inside the try block, this catch block will catch that error. And this error will now be this error that we've created right here. And we can do something with that error. So I could update this right here with this string. So to do that, I'm gonna say error.value, which is this right here. Remember, we use the value property to update it and set it equal to the error object that we have right here and the message property, which will be whatever message we've created right here. So now we're updating this with this message. Okay, now I'm also gonna log it to the console so we can see it, console.log, and we'll say error.message. All right then, in fact, we'll output instead error.value just to make sure that this thing has worked right here. Okay, so if I save this and refresh at the minute, then we don't get that error. But if I was to come over here and just change this to post instead, which doesn't exist, then we see no data available. So we're catching that error and we can do something with it. And later on, we could output it in the template. But for now, we won't bother with that. Okay, so let's change that back to posts. Now, this is the case if the data is not okay, if there was an error like we had a minute ago. If it is okay, then it bypasses this if check right here. And down here, what I'm gonna do is just update this post right here. But first of all, we need to pass the JSON data into JavaScript. So let me come down here and say posts.value is equal to await and then data.json. So we take the data response we have and we use the JSON method on it. This is asynchronous, remember, it returns a promise. So we use a wait in front of that to wait here until this is done. Once it's done, the value will be passed into this. So now we're updating the posts. And since we're updating that now, we should be able to output them to the screen. So let me save this and preview, and we can see now they're on the screen, awesome. Now there's a couple of things I want to do in the template. First of all, I want to output the error if there is one. So I need to return the error at the bottom of the setup function, this thing right here, because we want to use it. And I'm gonna check if there is an error. If there is, we'll output it. So I'll do a div tag, first of all, and we'll attach vIv to that, like so and we want to check if there is an error. Now, if there's not, it's gonna be null, so it won't output anything. If we assign a value to it, like we do here, then it will output the error, in which case we'll just say error like so. Okay, so if I save this and come over here and refresh, we don't see the error because there's no error, but if I change this to post and save it, then we can see right here, no data available. All right, cool. So I want to also output down here a loading message if this is still being loaded. So basically we only want to try and output this if we have a length inside the array. If we don't have a length inside the array, then we can say something like loading, all right? So let's now do another div tag and then attach vIv to that and say if posts dot length. Now, if this is the case, it means that the post value has been added to and we have a length to it. In that case, I want to output the posts and now I can add another div down here and I can say v else and output instead loading dot dot dot. So what we're doing is checking if we have length to the posts. 
If we do have length, then obviously this load has done and we can output the posts. If we don't have length, then this V else will fire and it will say loading and we won't have length until this is complete. So save this and come over here. And now we can see no data available. That's because of this thing right here. So let's save that. And if we refresh, you'll be able to see loading very, very quickly if you look very hard. Refresh again, and basically we can just see a flash, but I promise you it is there. It says loading for a split second. Then when we have the posts, it shows the posts. So this is the basics of how we can work with asynchronous code inside the setup function. All right then, so we've seen how we can use asynchronous code to fetch some data inside this setup function right here, and that's good, it all works. However, imagine this scenario. You had a very big application with loads of different components, and on different pages and different sections of the application, you might want to use this same data. Now, in that case, you'd have to essentially repeat all of this code in any component that needs it. And that's not very efficient. You don't want to be repeating your code over and over in different places. So one of the benefits of using the composition API in the setup function is that we could externalize all of this logic into a separate function in its own file. And then we could just import that function in any component that needs the data and invoke the function inside the setup hook for that component. So then we're only defining all of the logic once in one file and importing and using it wherever we needed it. So that's what we're going to do. Now, when we create these external functions, we tend to call them in view, either composables or composition functions, but you don't have to call them that. It's not the official name, I don't think. It's just what I call them and it's what I've heard other people call them as well. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a composition function or a composable to house all of this logic and then we're just going to import it into this file so we can use it. So what I'll do is create a new folder inside source called composables and this is the way I'm going to create composables in the future. I'll always create a folder called composables to put those files in and each composable will generally have its own file. So I'm going to create one here called get posts since that's what it's going to do and this is a javascript file not a view file we're not making a view template or anything like that we're just creating a javascript function so let's create that function i'm going to call it get posts and this is also generally what i do i name the function the same as the file i'm going to set that equal to a function and inside this function we want to put all of this logic right here so i'm going to cut all of that and then I'm going to paste it inside this function. Now, let me just scoot this up over here. And one thing I'm not going to do is invoke the load function right here. I don't want to do that inside this function. I only want to do that from the component that uses it. So I remove that. But now what I need to do is return some things from this function, because if I invoke this function over here, yeah, okay, it's going to define these and it's going to define this function, but that's all it's doing. We can't then access any of these things from inside this component. So I need to return some values so that when we invoke this function, it returns those values and we can capture them. So I'm going to, at the bottom, return an object and it's going to have the posts inside the object, which is this thing right here. It's also going to return the error if there is one and also the load function. We need that to load the data. This automatically doesn't run when we invoke this. We have to return the load function so that we can capture it when we invoke the get posts method or get post function and then invoke the load method right here. So that's what I'm doing. I'm returning these things. Now also we have to import inside this file ref because at the minute it's not going to know what ref is. We imported it into this file up here, but we're not using it inside this file anymore. We're using it inside get posts. So I'm going to cut it from here and I'm going to paste it at the top of get posts over here. And now we can use it. And then finally, I want to export this get posts function from this file so that we can import it in other files. So I'm going to say export default get 
posts. Okay, so now we're exporting that, we can import it inside this function. I'm going to do that at the top. I'm going to say import and we want get posts from and it's going to be dot dot come out of the current folder forward slash then into composables then we want get posts and we don't need the dot js here it automatically knows that this is a javascript file okay so now we can invoke this function inside setup so i can say get posts like so and that's going to run this function right but what does that do well, it creates these values, it creates this function, but it doesn't run the function, and then it returns these values. So we can grab them from this, because this returns those values. So I can say now const, and then do some destructuring to get values from this. And all we need to do is place inside this object any of these values that we need. So I could get the posts from there, the error from there, and also the load function from there. And now I can use any of these inside this component. So I want to use the load function to invoke that load method. That will actually run this function. It will get the data. It will update the error if there is one right here. And it will also update the posts once we get them. And don't forget, we're returning those and we're grabbing those here. So now we can use them inside this function. So initially, when we invoke this function, post is going to be an empty array, and this will be null. But after we use the load function, then after a second or so, this right here will have a value, or this will have a value if there's an error. Does that make sense? And we're still doing the same thing down here. We're returning these values, posts and error. So all of this is still valid up here as well. We can still use posts and error. So this is a much better way to organize all of our logic. We're just externalizing it inside a separate function, which we're going to call composables or composition functions. And then we're just using that function in any component that needs it. We import it and then we grab what we need from it and then we can use it. All right, so let's save this and refresh and hopefully everything still works. We saw loading for a second and then these appear like this. Now, if I go over here and change this, we should see an error. Come over here and we see no data available. All right. So this is all working and we're going to be creating several different composables or composition functions throughout the rest of this course. So don't worry, you will get more practice at this. Now, there is actually one more thing I want to do in this video, and that is to go to our single post component and also output the tags. Because remember, if we take a look at the data, we have this tags array as well. And now we're fetching this data. We can access those tags and output them. So let me go to the single post component again. And we have the post title. We have the snippet. And now I'm going to cycle through the tags. So I'm going to say span, first of all, and then attach a v4 to this so we can cycle through them. And that is going to be for tag in and it's post dot tags. So we have the post available to us and we're just accessing the tags property on that post. We're cycling through them and referring to each one as a tag. So now we can output them. But before we do that, we need a key so let's bind to that and set it equal to tag and we're going to make it so that tags are unique so a post can't have the same tag twice so this key will be unique okay so inside that i'm just going to output a hash symbol because a lot of tags have that before them and then output the tag itself so if i save this now we should see all the tags for each post as well Okay then, so now what I'd like to do is create a details view, a details component, so that if we click on one of these posts right here, then it goes to the details for that post. And instead of just showing a snippet, we show all of the content for the post. So to do this, we're gonna to have to set up a details component, a route for that details component, and then we're also going to have to fetch that single post. Now, we're going to create another composable function to make that fetch to create a single post. We have a composable for getting all of the posts, but we'll make one for a single one too. So the first thing we need to do is create the details component inside the views folder. So details.view. I'm going to boilerplate this and inside the template, I'm just going to say details, just so we know that we've landed on this page if we view it. Now, the next thing I want to do is go to the router file and create a route for this component. 
So another object, the path is going to be forward slash posts, forward slash, and then a route parameter called ID. So that will be the ID of the post that we want to view. Now the name of this route will be details. And then we also need a component for this. Oops, component, and that will be the details one. So we need to import this at the top. So I'll duplicate this and change home to details like so. Now I'm also going to say right here, props is true. So that if we link to this page, we can access the route parameter as a prop inside the details component. So now we do need to link to this page and we're gonna do that from the single post. This is where we output a single post right here. We're gonna place a router link around the H3. So let me create this router link like so. And then I'm gonna close this off, open it up, and I'm gonna paste this H3 inside the router link. Okay, so where do we want this to go? We'll say two and set it equal to an object. And we've put a colon right here so we can use the object with data binding. And the object will have a name property, which will be details. That's the component we're going to. But also we need the params property because we're sending in a route parameter. And the route parameter we need is the ID. And that will be the post.id. Remember, we have that inside the data, the ID property on each post. So we have the post right here. We have access to that inside the template. And so we can just say post.id. So now if I was to click on one of these things over here, it will go to post forward slash the ID of that post. So let me refresh again, come over here, and now we can see post forward slash two. All right then. So the next thing we want to do inside this details component is actually fetch the data based on the ID. Now we need to accept as a prop, first of all, the ID so we can use it. So we'll say props and then inside here, ID. We also need a setup function whereby we can take in the props object so we can access the ID inside here as well. So the next step now is to create that composable function to fetch a single blog post using this ID. So then let's create inside the composables folder a new file called get post.js to do this. So this time get post, not posts. All right, so the first thing we need to do is import the ref value from view. So I'm gonna say import and then ref from view because we're gonna use refs inside this function. Now let's create the function and we'll call it get post and set it equal to a function all right, so inside what I'm gonna do is actually just copy a lot of this code right here from our get posts function because it's gonna be quite similar and I'm gonna paste it in. So this time around, we're gonna have a reference called post, not posts, and it's not going to be an empty array because we're only getting one post. Instead, I'll set it to be null to begin with. The error is also gonna be null to begin with. Now we also want a load function, which is asynchronous, and we try to get the data, only this time it's gonna be a different endpoint. Remember, to get a single post, it's forward slash posts, forward slash the ID. Now we don't have the ID inside this function yet. So when I call this function from inside our details component, I'm gonna to have to pass the ID in as an argument, and then I will accept it inside this function. So now, I could just come over here and say, tack on the ID to the end, and then this is our endpoint. So we're gonna fetch that. We're still gonna check if we get an okay response. If we don't, then we throw an error, and we'll say something else in here, like that post does not exist. So if there's a problem getting the post, we'll just throw this error, and then down here we catch the error, and we update the error value. And then if the data is okay, we bypass this. We want to update the post value this time, not posts. So we change that to post.value. And again, we pass it into a JavaScript object. This is asynchronous, so we await it, and the value is updated after it's done. Okay, and then at the end, we want to return post, not posts, the error message, if there is one, and the load function. So that is pretty much done now. Now, this is getting a single post, not a bunch of posts. And at the end, we return that post right here. Now I need to export this function. So export 
default and then the function name which is get post and now all we need to do is use this composable inside the details component. So that's pretty simple to do. All we need to do is first of all import the composable. So import get post from and we want to come out of the views folder so dot dot forward slash into composables and then we want the get post function. So now we can use it inside this setup function. I'm going to say get post like so. Now remember inside this function we take in the ID we need that so we need to pass it in right here as well and we can do that by using the props dot ID. So now since this returns a few values we can say const and then destructure whatever values we need and we want the single post we want the error if there is one and also the load function. Cool, so now we can invoke the load function to start this fetch. It's going to try and get the data and then we're either going to get back a post or an error. Now we need to return both of those values so we can use them inside the template. Post and error like so. So now we have those, we can go and flesh out this template. Now I want to check if there's an error first of all. So I'll make a div and attach a vIv to that which is equal to error. Remember that's null to begin with but if there is an error it gets a value and then this will show and in this case we just output the error like so. Now I want to do the same thing but this time check for the post so another div and then I'm going to say v hyphen if and set that equal to post so if we have a value for the post now then we're going to output this. I'm also going to give this a class so we can style it later on and that class is going to be post. All right so inside this I can output the title inside an h3 so let's do that first of all close off this h3 and then output the title inside that so post.title and then below that we can also output the body so I'm going to do this inside a paragraph tag and I'll also give this a class equal to pre so we can style this as well and I'm going to output right here the post.body like so Okay, so we're outputting the title and the body now. So let's just save this and take a look. If I click on one of these and refresh this page, we can see now we get the title and the body. If I go back and click on another, we get the title and the body. Awesome. So this is working and it all looks good. We've created our second composable function now, and this could be reused in any component which needs to get a single post. Now, finally, I just want to add a few styles to style up this and this. So I'm going to paste these in at the bottom. And all I'm doing is applying these styles to the post, which is this thing. So a max width of 1200 pixels, margin zero and auto. Post P, so that's this thing right here. I've said the color is this, the line height is 1.5, margin top 40 pixels, and anything with a class of pre, we're saying white space pre-wrap so it goes on to the next line. So I'm going to refresh over here and Get those styles it looks pretty much the same so far but as we go further into the blog we will style it a bit better as well